Hello and welcome to the Still Life All Painting Time Lapse. Here you can see the finished uh, painting. Here is the head, as I saw when I took a photo of it. But this is uh, painted uh, Natura, as you can see here. You can see it in the background. And I start on my usual uh, thing, my uh, tone canvas, which I... Uh, first I do a um, linen canvas with a uh, gesso over it, a couple of, uh, of layers. Then I wash it with uh, raw umber and um, uh, some turpentine or turp to make it a little bit brownish. As you can see, I'm starting out with the, with the light areas. I always do that. And then I use the, the tone uh, as a kind of a guiding rod, as a basically as a negative or a shadow. And then I start filling in. As you can see here, I just start to fill in the blanks and uh, that's what I do. And of course, this is a time lapse from a, a longer um, tutorial, which is on my YouTube channel. You will find a link to that in the description. I, um, in that video, I, do, uh, I talk about painting and stuff, but I also use music in the background and uh, you can actually see me just doing the painting flow but also detail that there's um, uh, piano music and stuff so for you who want to really learn how to paint you have to spend some time to watch how I do my brushwork because that is the thing if I when I learn or teach people to to paint or do anything I always try to explain to them, look at the brushwork, go to the classics, look at the brushwork, forget about the motif, forget about what's painted, uh, what uh, their, their agenda was, if it was religious or whatever, forget it. Just go in and try to understand the brushwork. How did they use the light? How did they use uh, the brushwork to create almost like a sculptural uh, effect in the painting, a 3D type of painting. And if you see the classics, the best of them, like Rembrandt and stuff, they, it's always the same thing. They're using the paint as clay. And uh, there's a woman that I'm t actually te teaching now through Patreon and stuff. And I, uh, she has all the things that... Uh, you need to become an artist she had some skills but she also didn't see she didn't really observe so I was forcing her to do some um, some uh, uh, copying of Leonardo da Vinci and I told her look at the way he has been using uh, the charcoal or the pen or whatever look at how he has used it forget about what it is and this was the Mendoza drawing look at how you actually how he did it how he was thinking how did he use the use the uh, use the shadows and how did he use the directions and all that and she did it once and was kind of not so good. Then she did it twice and it was better. And the third time she did it, she actually started to get a hang on it. So you can actually evolve as a as a as an artist quite fast technically, if you keep on banging on it and and learn to look for the right things. If you're gonna learn how to paint, you have to go for how do they create the illusion. If you are doing, of course, uh, uh, figurative painting like I do. How do you build the thing? How did the artist, how did Turner make his uh, landscapes come alive in the way he did? It was all the overpaint, all the pushing and shoving and, and kind of pulling and uh, the, all the things together almost like a carpet like it was knitted in, in a more chaotic way that created in the end this beautiful rendition of a, of a landscape and it's the same thing I'm doing here this is actually landscape painting there is no real difference between a still life painting and a landscape painting and that is, a, is a, what I think when I also do still lives I think uh, I'm actually painting 
an outdoor landscape here. It's the same thing. It's the depth. It's the thing that is closest to you. It is the, what the light hits. There you have to build more colors. You, you, as you can see, I'm building in the light areas here. I'm building uh, thick colors. And as you can see in the background, all the brushwork there are more toned down and flatter. I also give that some, I also give the background some, some um, texture, but I try to keep them apart. You don't want the same amount of paint in a whole thing. If you want to build that 3D sculptural thing, you have to keep some in the back, and the thing in the foreground, you just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And the same thing you do with details. You can't really see that much details in the background in the landscape. So you don't paint all the detail as clear as you, you paint the thing in the foreground. And when you start to understand that, then you also start how to use the, the brush in directions. You under, start to kind of see the the geometric shapes in the in the things uh, uh, you paint it even becomes easier and then when you come to a certain skill level intuition start to take over and you manage to uh, go all in with intuition and um, that is a way to to go i actually been struggling mildly with some 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 um, um, uh, commission works uh, a couple of girls that I'm painting and it wasn't so much uh, uh, coloring them because I took uh, pictures of the girls outside in sunlight so the camera didn't actually catch that many many different tones but what happens was I wasn't painting that much on it but I was going around it circling it like a like a wolf and 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 um, despite not painting on it every day I was thinking about it. When I finally started the painting, I, I solved many of the problems because suddenly I realized how to do it. And uh, that is how you have to go about it. If it is still life or landscape or portrait, it, this is also a landscape and a portrait. It's a portrait of a sheep's head. And, you know, I like that eye because it seems so alive. It seems so sad. I actually still have this head in my freezer and I'm going to do one more condition of it before I actually uh, uh, I usually put it in the ground or I put it in some some um, a cage or something and I throw it into the sea so all the sea animals can actually eat uh, eat it clean and then you will get a different tone if you if you find a find a cranium in nature it will be quite white and if you throw it into the sea it will get a different texture and stuff like that so and it's also a quite old smelly thing by now, you know, it's been tamed up and uh, defrosted many times and then, you know, because I've been painting it several times actually, this I think this was the third time I actually painted it. Here you can see the uh, small kunsch and here too all the brushwork. Sometimes I use a little bit too much brushwork, so I have to use a knife and kind of remove some of it, but then you get all the small textures inside there anyway so uh, when you then use a glaze over it you kind of get the different uh, different uh, textures and, and uh, yeah sculptural effect that you're after I hope you hey I put on the furnace furnace some or some oil to and you can see how how you, you I can actually see the colors coming when I yeah when I put that on and now I'm signing it so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you give it a thumbs up I really need you to give it a thumbs up to tell the algorithm that you like it here you can see the finished product and I hope that you go to my patreon and sign up for a dollar five if you want me to teach you how to paint you can sign up for a five dollar patron I will then uh, help you and uh, for 15 I will uh, Skype with you or do a web thing once a month you can also pick up a small painting in my patreon giveaway if you sign up for five dollars a month so i hope you see you there and i hope you like the video and i hope to see you in the next one and keep on watching and keep on sharing 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 and help me grow my channel thanks for watching see you in the next video